So here is a simple example of error propagation using quadrature with adding and subtraction. Here we're given three variables and their uncertainty. Hopefully you're familiar with the plus or minus notation, say denoting that this first part is the value or sometimes referred to as the measure n. Plus or minus the uncertainty. In this case, that's of course the absolute uncertainty, delta a. And so on and so forth for b, delta b, c, delta c. And we want to find the result of this particular calculation here involving both addition and subtraction. But of course, we treat addition and subtraction exactly the same. We've of course given you a series of possible rules that you can use, and they sometimes can look a little frightening and complicated. So I actually advocate thinking more or less of applying these specific rules, but more in a procedural sense. And here it is. Um, the first thing you got to decide is whether you're dealing with absolute uncertainty, delta s, or the relative uncertainty, delta s over s. And it really depends on which mathematical operation you're doing. If you're doing addition subtraction, you're dealing with absolute uncertainty. And that's the case here, because we're adding and subtracting. And of course, what we can do first is to find out the value of s just simply by using the value of a, b, and c without worrying about the uncertainty. And of course, s is a plus b minus c, and we sub in things. Uh, let's do it properly and do it with the units, even though this calculation is quite trivial. You could still use your calculator if you want, giving us 6.0 grams. So that's a simple part. Just get the number without worrying about the uncertainty. Now, let's worry about the uncertainty. The first step we already did, actually, is to decide whether we're using absolute or relative. And since we're doing adding and subtracting, we're using absolute uncertainty. So you can get that started, delta s. Then the next step is basically to list out all the variables in the calculation. In this case, there's a, b, and c. So there's a, b, and c. And since we're dealing with absolute uncertainty, we're dealing with the absolute uncertainty of a, b, and c. So the next step is to sum up the uncertainties. Because whether we're adding or subtracting, the uncertainty always gets bigger, right? Even for subtracting, we can always have the biggest number minusing the smallest possible number to get us the biggest difference. But here, we assume that all the variables we deal with have uncertainty that comes from random processes that are best described by what's known as a Gaussian distribution, or as you know, as the bell curve, which is more likely to happen near the center of the possible range rather than the outside. As a result, when we add things up, we do this procedure called quadrature, which is what we do here now. We, we square each of the different things we're adding up, and then we sum them, and then we take the square root. And there you go. That's actually the same rule as we had given you all derived. But if you construct the rule yourself, step by step, I think it's easier to come up with the correct expression and also have a better sense of where it comes from. So now that we've got that constructed step by step, the last thing to do is just to sub in the values, and then we're done. Just to be extra explicit, showing you that all the units do actually work out. I include the units here, and I take a couple extra step as well. And of course, the square roots of gram square is just grams. And then finally, to express s as s plus or minus the absolute value of s, which we already have, we express things in the correct sig fig. And of course, the number of sig fig is determined by the uncertainty itself which we keep as a convention, one uncertain digit, which is therefore rounded up to the first decimal place. And so the value of s is going to be quoted to one decimal place as well, matching our uncertainty with 6.0 grams. And there you have it.